Hello there. So here is our first tutorial about making our Oregon Trail uh, summative project here. So, um, and it says from calendar because there was um, a significant chunk of the code that we actually already wrote in our pre-lab. So um, as I start going through this, you will see that I have already gone through and every place it told me um, that there was information from the pre-lab in the actual project here. Um, I've copied and pasted that. So, so I have my template open and you can see that it starts by telling us this is starter code and, um, and it's a simulation of a game traveling out west in the 1880s. Now, in order to run this, we're gonna need the random library, so it's really important we put those library imports at the start, so we import random right away. Um, and then our template has gone through and actually stored your welcome text, your help text, and your good luck text as a variable already so that you can print it um, as necessary. So as we keep going, um, it next starts telling us some information about um, the variables that represent the current state of the game. So um, at the beginning, you have traveled zero miles, you have 500 pounds of food, you're at full health, which is level five, and it's 3-1, so that's March 1st, which is the first date of our travel, and you start off with no illnesses. And then we create a variable called player name, and we leave it at as um, none at the moment, but we are going to go in later on and with an input station Statement. Statement. Um, we're going to have our our players tell us their name. Um, so again, you don't have to do anything with this. But let's go ahead and look at these constants, parameters that define the rules of the game and don't change. Or so these are things that help us um, define the way the game is going to be run. So when we travel, this is this first block of. Um, of information. You can see that the minimum amount of travel in a travel turn is 30 and the maximum is 60. So your code eventually is going to pick a random um, number between 30 and 60 and so when the player types travel they're going to travel somewhere between 30 and 60 miles and right below this you can see it's going to take them somewhere between three and seven days to travel between those. So this is um, the specifications um, so for how far uh, and how long it takes for a travel move. Um, so that's one of our three main commands. The second main command is rest. Um, and rest allows us to recover from illness. So again, rest is um, a random number between two and five days. And then um, the number of health changes, so in other words, how many points of health do you get back in a rest is always one. And the maximum that your health can be is five. So if you were already at health level five as a player, it wouldn't make any sense to do any rest because you can't go above five. Um, and then the third thing, that the main command that you can do um, is to hunt, which will help you regain food. Um, because if you run out of food, that's one of the ways you can lose the game. And so they tell you that every time you hunt, you get 100 pounds of food. So that's not random. You just go hunting and you get 100 pounds of food. But the number of days it takes is a random number between two and five. And then, um, Every day that you travel, you eat five pounds of food. Well, you, you and your party um, eat five pounds of food. Um, that is um, a fixed number. So every single day of travel, whether you travel three days or five days, um, every one of those days, you consume five pounds of food. And then the number of miles between, uh, it says New York City and Oregon, we're actually, I think we're supposed to be starting in Missouri, but essentially the number of miles that you have to travel the trail is 2,000. Um, so this next bit here says from calendar pre-lab. So this information, line 68 through 70, I already copied in from my pre-lab. So yours is blank to start with, but if you followed the instructions that I gave you, you actually already went in and copied your information from your calendar pre-lab and put it into here. Um, and here's the names of the months, and we remember that we put a fake uh, name of the month for our first entry because Python starts counting at zero, and when we 
list the month and date. We always start with January as one, not as zero. So we put fake in there um, just because you will never be at month zero. It doesn't exist on our calendar. Okay, this next part here, um, the date report, I copied and pasted everything from the entire function contract to the rest of this date report um, function that we wrote from our pre-lab right into here, so I'm not gonna spend time. So the very first thing that we have to write here um, is we have to replace this path with uh, our function for miles remaining. Now, the other thing that we have to do is anytime we define a function, we should go ahead and do our code, uh, our, um, our function um, contract. So um, the name is uh, miles remaining. The purpose is to um, tell the user how many miles are left to travel. Perfect. Um, our input, um, so if I was to look at this, um, so we know that um, in our function, we're gonna have to know how many miles we've traveled already and how many miles there are left between where we're at and the end of the road. Um, but those are not gonna be arguments, meaning that we aren't gonna put anything in here. So what I'm gonna put in here is none, and then in parentheses, we're gonna be using some global variables because they are not technically inputs because you're not using an argument in between the parentheses, so they're not gonna need to put anything inside of here. Um, but the function is going to require some information that is stored in global variables. And then our output, um, let's see what my AI says, print a string that tells the user how many miles are left to travel. That sounds pretty good, actually. So. Uh, I have written my function contract, now I get to write my uh, code. All right, so what's the first thing that we're gonna need to know? Um, so we are gonna need to know some of our global variables. So to start with, um, I need to come up here and start with how many miles have I already traveled? And obviously at the beginning of the game, that number is zero. So the first thing that this function down here, miles remaining, um, needs, and I'm gonna replace this past statement with that. Um, I'm gonna need to the, know the global variable, and the one that I need is miles traveled. So that is the first global variable that I need. How many, how many miles have I already traveled, which at the beginning of the game is zero. The other thing I'm going to need to know is the global variable, um, the number of miles remaining miles between wherever you're at and Oregon. So at the beginning, you're at the, what, somewhere in Missouri, I think it said, um, and Oregon, but this variable is gonna change as you get closer and closer to Oregon, we're gonna store the number of miles remaining here in this variable. So then if you think about what we need to do in this, um, we are going to have to do a little math problem here. And we're not gonna use a print statement, we're actually going to, um, and I'm gonna change this, instead of uh, print, we're going to return um, how many miles are left to travel. Boom. Okay, so um, I'm not gonna do a print statement, I'm actually gonna use a return. So remember, return um, just remembers the code, um, and then I can use it elsewhere, and if I want to print what it is, I can enclose this function in a, um, in a uh, print statement. So indeed, right here, um, it figured out that if I um, take how many miles are left, and I subtract from that the number of miles that I traveled in that particular move, um, I now know how many miles are remaining, and I now have that stored as our output. Um, so I'm gonna erase this little uh, thing here that says enter your code here, because we just did. All right, 
Um, so this next bit here is from the calendar prelab, so I'm not going to go through it because you can copy and paste it from your calendar prelab, which was in our other tutorial. Um, and that's basically just figuring out how many days are in the present month. All right. So now this next bit here, um, this is um, an important thing um, that is built into our game structure. So if I read these comments, the next bit here calculates whether a sickness occurs on the current day based on how many days remain in the month and how many sick days have already occurred in the month. So if there are n days left in the month, so maybe there's 20 days left in the month, then the chance of a sick day is either zero, because I've already been sick enough, um, one out of n, so again, if there was 20 days left, my chances are one in 20, or two out of the remaining days left, depending on whether there have been two sick days so far, one sick day so far, or no sick days so far. Um, so basically, if you've already been sick twice, then you aren't going to get sick again. If you've been sick once in the month, then the odds are you getting sick another time. Um, and if you haven't been sick yet, then it's two because you have to get sick twice a month. Um, so this is actually the purpose of this next function. So I'm going to go ahead and type in here purpose because this is part of my function contract. And then um, right above this line, I am going to type the, oops, I'm going to type the name of this, which it looks like right down here, random sickness occurs, and my AI figured that out. So there's my name, there's my purpose, um, and I will leave this information all in there as the purpose. So this guarantees that there will be exactly two sick days each month. And incidentally, that every day of the month is equally likely to be a, um, a sick day. So that's, that's our purpose. So now I need to know um, inputs. Um, and this is also going to be none, meaning I'm not going to have to have an argument here. But I am going to put in here um, global variables because, yes, I will actually be using some global variables. And then outputs. Um, nope. We are actually going to be, um, we're going to return, again, remember, not printed to the screen, whether the player is sick or not. And of course, so if it's sick, then it will be true. Um, and if they're not, then it's going to be false. All right. So I am going to put my code in the spot where the pass is. And um, what am I going to need to know? Well, first of all, I'm going to have to know the global variable for what day and what day and what month are, are we presently at? So I'm going to type in global. Um, we're going to need the month. Um, I'm also going to need to know back in my, stored in my global variable um, the day. So remember when we start, the month is 3, which is March, and the day is 1, which is the first day of March. Um, and then the other thing that I'm going to need um, this is actually going to be both something that I input and possibly um, output is how many sicknesses have I already had this month? Um, and if you look back at the beginning, at the beginning of the game, you haven't had any sicknesses yet this month. So that's where we'll store that information. So those are things that we're going to do. All right. So now, um, what do I need to, to calculate here? So first, um, I... I need to make sure that we are, um, if the present day is, is less than the number of days in the month. So in other words, um, if the present day is 30 and I'm in February, um, then obviously I'm not actually in February anymore. I'm now into March. Um, so basically 
if you're on the last day of the month, uh, it, it's checking for that. So um, I'm going to do an if statement. And um, if our current day, which we just got as a global variable, is less than um, days in the month, which is something that we got from our pre-lab, um, and then inside of that days in the month, which month are we talking about? So what we actually want is the present month, which is this global variable called month. So I'm going to hit tab there. So that's the beginning of my if statement. So as long as I still have time left in the month, um, then um, I'm going to use a local variable here, and I'm going to call it sickness. And that sickness is going to be a random number, an integer, um, between the present day and the number of days left in the month. So if it is the um, first of March, and there are 31 days in March, then I'm going to pick a random number between the first and the, th and the 31st. But since every month has a um, different number of days, and since uh, the number of days left is different at different points in the game, um, so I'm actually going to start with what my AI thinks, um, random dot random int. So, oops, rand int. So this is the one that picks a random integer between whatever two things go in there. So the first thing um, is not one, but our present day. So what day is it in the month? And then the last, so the earliest number, the lowest number, would be whatever the present day is, and the highest number is going to be however many days are in this month. So that's days in, oops, days in, month, and of course I need to know which month I am in. So, so this is just picking a random number between what day it is and however many days are in that particular month. And please note there are two parentheses here because one ends the parentheses around month and the other ends the function um, arguments for the random int um, function that we've imported from the function library. Um, okay, so if that's, if that's true, um, then I am going to, um, so it's going gonna, it's gonna to make that variable, okay? Now, so this is lowercase, local variable. It's defined and used inside of this function and nowhere else. So now I'm going to see, and um, so sickness is, is going to be some number um, be between present day and however many days are in that month. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to return... Um, the result of um, the odds of us being sick. So that means that we need to see, um, first of all, um, what are the odds? So basically, how many days are left in the month? So we're going to want to know what that is, sickness. And from that, we're going to subtract the present day. Um, so it's going to do this. It's going to compare this sickness number that we just um, have, subtract the present day from it, and then um, if that calculation there happens to be less than or equal to 2, because that's the number of times per month I have to get sick, um, um, it's so it's less than or equal to two, but not just two, because if I'm in the middle of the month, I might have already been sick already. And so I actually have to subtract from that two, oops, two, minus sicknesses suffered this month, which is that first one. And by the way, when it pops up, if that's the one you want, you just hit enter. So what this is going to do is it's going to return a true or false. It's going to start by saying, okay, um, what are the odds of you getting sick, a random number between the present day and the days left in the month, and find out, is that 
um, number greater than equal to two minus the sicknesses I've already had this month. Um, so it's going to return a true or a false, and that's what we said our output would be. Um, so I think I'm going to stop my first tutorial here, um, and I will continue uh, with handle sickness in my next tutorial. Thank you so much.